So after our daughter, Kennedy, passed away, I naturally had questions. Uh, where do we go after this? What is life? And it just kind of led into this prayer. And in that prayer, I wasn't expecting some miraculous thing, but I got something miraculous. So I was raised in the church. I was baptized at eight years old. I was in Young Women's and then I got married at 18. I think once I became an adult, I really started to question what I believed. I got to a point in my life where I realized that I had been writing on my parents' testimonies more than my own. So for seven years, I put my faith on a shelf and I didn't touch it. I didn't think about it. I did everything that I was told not to do in that there was good things I experienced, there were really rough, hard things I experienced, but I grew from all those experiences. It wasn't until 2015 when our daughter Kennedy passed away. I was 37, almost 38 weeks pregnant, and her heart just stopped, and there was no reason why she had passed away. And it was heart-wrenching for our family. We had tried to have children for three years. We have an 11-year-old son who is amazing and one of my favorite people on this planet. But we had wanted more kids and it took us a really long time. And then Kennedy passed away and it broke me. In that brokenness, I was able to be vulnerable enough to want answers for myself, not for anyone else. One day, I was sitting at my kitchen table and I decided to pray. And the idea of praying was really uncomfortable because I felt so far away from a Heavenly Father. I had no idea what really that even meant to me at that time. I gave one of the clumsiest prayers I've ever heard in my life. The questions, the specific questions I had was, why did Kennedy die? I wasn't really sure I was gonna get an answer. But as I sat there, I felt so much comfort, more comfort than I've ever felt in my whole life. And I felt my daughter around me, and I felt our Savior, and I felt what it, what it meant to have like lo unconditional love around you. Something struck me really, really hard, and that was Kennedy sacrificed her earthly life so that my family could come back to the gospel and that she could be my beacon and my light. After that incredibly clumsy prayer, I opened up a Book of Mormon. The last time I had opened a Book of Mormon was probably in seminary and I probably wasn't paying attention. Once I opened up the Book of Mormon for myself and not for anyone else, I just kept reading. And the more I kept reading, the more relevant it was in my life, which was shocking because it always felt so old and ancient to me. But I was reading things that I felt like they understood what I was going through. And it wasn't until I was about halfway through that I really started to get this desire to not just attend church, but to really dive all the way in. So I started getting the discussions again. My son also was getting the discussions with me. Then I was prepped to go through the temple. And at this time, I'd gotten pregnant again with another little girl and we found out that she was going to pass away also. So in March of 2016, our daughter Holland lived for one hour and then passed away. And it wasn't, it shouldn't have been able to happen. I shouldn't have been able to survive both of these horrific tragedies. And I know for a fact it was from that clumsy prayer at that kitchen table was because I was able to get through all of this because that was the starting point for my life. Since that day, they have carried me. Those experiences have carried me to be here right now. You know, with loss comes grief and can come depression. And I think sometimes you get lost in that. And knowing that I have a hope now that is a living, breathing hope, and his name is Jesus Christ, has laid a foundation in my life 
that I now know that I can go through really hard trials and I can go through really hard moments and I don't have to wait for him because he's there. And I don't have to be perfect because he's been there the entire time and he comes to my level. The difference in my life now is that fear doesn't own me anymore. Um, death doesn't really scare me because I've seen beautiful things happen with death. I used to hear people say that, you know, death isn't the end. I didn't believe them. But I now know it's so much more than that. And I look forward to the day that I can hold both of my girls again. And I look forward to this journey though. I look forward to now. I look forward to today because there's so much hope in today. And there's so much hope in this life. And the Savior loves us so much. And I know that through my daughters, I've been able to learn that and believe that. And this is the gospel to me.